Good morning everyone, it's Joker, and today we are back with another slime video. And, uh, the second Heroes Jubilee Blitz to return since, what, like, October of 2022? Uh, this time it comes back with the two and a half anniversary, and there are a few uh, things that <laughs> will be very obvious that are not like normal Jubilee catalysts that we get every month. The first off is that there are no crystals to be had in the ranking rewards. It's only tickets, moats, and new ingots to donate to your Chancellor Union, which will raise a level up and give you a whole bunch of stuff. So, there are no crystals to be had, which means that you are much less inclined to try super duper hard to get stuff, because these are the third, se they're season three tickets, only used on that one big banner that's going for the next, like, six months or something like that. So, not a big deal. The second thing is that there are both Chancellor milestones for doing it individually, and then there are uh, Union milestones for everybody in your union doing it, and you can get some, you know, contract shards, and some memory stone shards, and some other stuff, fine and dandy. The biggest thing is that there is a move out limit, and that means you cannot use any EX units at all. Protectors, battle units, nothing. So we're going back to, mm, what, February of 2023, before EX units were a thing. Anything before that is usable, and anything after that that are not free to play five stars are not allowed, which makes team building quite difficult for people that started uh, during EX metas. So these videos are, they're gonna be probably pretty rough for most people. Um, but, you know, let's start with the disclaimers. The number one is gonna be the biggest. Your results will definitely 100% vary because you know, I've been playing since day one. I've got every unit in the game at level 100, at minimum, except for the Autogram units. So, you are not going to have that. You're not going to have the units that I have, period. So, use this video as an example, as a guide to do what you can do with whatever units you have available. God knows what they are. I'm sorry in advance if, you know, your box is shit with no EX units. But, <laughs> again, there's nothing really too big you're missing out on here, so don't worry too much about it. Um, disclaimer number two are these are the units I use for protection gauge, and these are the units I use for skill point gain. I'm going to use a lot of them between all the videos. And then disclaimer number three is don't forget to go and optimize your dark building in town for normal battle one. But uh, let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so Normal Battle 1 wants a Dark Magic team, and it's starting with a good orb change for Isis. There are three ants at the same time, so you uh, most of the time probably would think about AoEing with Dark Rimuru or Octogram Lumi, but there, you know, there is a strategy to at least launch some single targets, which I'm going to show you now. Uh, they do poison you. If you want to bring, you know, Gobta or someone to try and get rid of that, then you can, but I don't really recommend it. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of play in here. Turn 3 is the max turn, but we're not going for that because we want max overkill, which is 1.4 million damage, which even I haven't gotten. So, good luck. But this is the team right here. <clears throat> so, we're starting with Dark Veldora, Protector. You know, stacking greens and everything. Dark Milum, we're bringing the new Earth Veldora. Because his skill is that he changes Exalted Champion orbs, and it could be any color of orb, including oranges. And both him, Milim, and Rimuru are on Exalted Champion, so he could orb change any of their orbs. And then we have Milim's orb change, and that's all. That's all we're using, so could be a bit fishy. We've got skill-fused Octogram Lumi. She's going to be giving us some permanent buffs. Rimuru will be our half-nuker when we're technically going to try and alt with Shinsha and Milim as single targets and get as much damage as possible. Whether that actually happens is up for debate, but, you know, that's what we're trying to do. We're running skill point units down here, so we can use two skills on turn one, and I'll show you what that looks like, but let's go ahead and find where that starts. All right, so we're starting with 42 skill points, which means we can use the uh, orb change for Veldora. We've got Milim and him in the first slot, so we can just use it and then send him away. And then we're going to bring Shinsha in. 
who uh, does not have a dark unit underneath her. Oh, I missed something. I forgot something here. Okay, well, we're sending six green. I should have used Shinsha's debuff for extra points here, but I brain farted and did not. However, we continue on. Um, this is still my highest scoring run. So turn two. I mean, they're doing one damage to us, but most of the actual damage score that we're going to take is from their poison, which we have no way to dodge here, unless we have some very lucky RNG with the poison bracelets and all that. But there we go. We have 40, or we use 25 right there to use Lumi, and then we'll bring Veldora in, and we'll use the Milim Orb change, and then the green buff, and now we will use Veldora to reset Veldora to use his orb change again, because both of these blues are him, which means they will be changed. So <clears throat> we'll bring Rimuru in for Veldora now. Ideally, you want these, these three units to get their ult so you can nuke properly. You know, two single targets, then Rimuru will follow up with an AoE. But it is, it is what it is. So we'll go ahead and send it. Shinsha doesn't have any orbs here, unfortunately, which kind of does hurt her. But we do get the ult for Milim, and I think very close for Rimuru. So that was very, very lucky, where that ant did not die. Thank God. So the poison's coming in. Everyone's got it. Okay, sure, fine, whatever. Uh, turn 3 is the max turn, technically, before you start losing points, but this team cannot do 1.4 million damage in 3 turns. It can barely do 1.4 to begin with, so we gotta do some funny things here. Milim's coming out, we used her orb change to get that, and then when we take her out, it'll bring that blue orb of hers in, which if we swap for Veldora, is now his, and then we can use his orb change again after resetting. We've also used our first stack of Shinsha's crit debuff and extra point ability, the thing we should have used on turn one. We actually didn't reset it, so we kind of we brought it back up to 65, but I didn't really want to reset with uh, here because I wanted to use this here. And then we can use both skills from Lumi, so the AoE buff and then the alt buff. And then we'll go ahead and send this. This will get Rimuru's alt, Unfortunately, it will not get Shinsha's... Actually, it does get Shinsha's ult, I'm sorry. Um, it gets us all three. And 147 points, which is obviously not enough to use literally everything, because you the dark Shinsha buff would also be nice. Um, we'd need a bit more RNG for that. But we do have three alts here, which is you know the most important thing. So Lumi's done her buffs a couple times. They do put a crit nerf on you, so there is a chance that... You know, even with Rimuru's buff, you would not crit, and that would be a sad, sad run. Um, also, Rimuru is skill-fused, so his skill is now 40 points instead of 55. If he's not skill-fused, you know, you'll just have to budget your points a little bit more. Uh, but here we're trying to figure out what I can use alongside the alt buff and the crit buff, because those are going to be the most impactful, since we don't have enough points to use Shinsha's buff as well. So, we'll use the second stack of the alt buff. We'll bring Milim in, and that gives us just enough to use the crit and the alt. And now we've capped out, I think we've almost capped out, or we did cap out Veldora right here. Because he stops at 70% magic attack. Uh, man, I really hope I actually use Veldora here. Man, I really hope I use Veldora here. Oh, okay, we're, che we're checking. <laughs> oh, no. Don't be an idiot. What am I doing here? All right, there we go. There's Veldora. I actually scared myself. Okay, so now we have the 60 or 65% magic buff, plus the crit, plus the ult, plus the dart for the attack for all eyes. Milim does 400k, Shinja does 348, very good, and Rimuru did not crit, so he did not um, do any additional damage there. And remember, I mentioned before that the damage cap is technically 1.4 million. We did 986, so there is much room for improvement on this team. But that is my current high score with that dark, you know, single target and AoE um, focused team. But let's try something else. All right, next up is the AoE focused team more than anything else. We still have Milim, Shinsha, Rimuru, Lumi is still here. We've just swapped Veldora now for Isis. But now, instead of trying to get, you know, two single targets, we're just going to try and buff up 
Rimuru as much as possible with the AoE and the ult and everything else that we can possibly do. And this, I believe, is three turns instead of four. So it is max turn bonus, but it it's not going to get you the 1.4 million. I think we do about half that. But the team essentially runs the exact same way. Um, I believe we are starting with just 30 points here, so we don't have enough to use two skills, even if we wanted to, so we'll just use the Isis Orb Change turn one, and then we'll send her away for Rimuru, or we'll send Lumi, one of the two. You could, in theory, nuke with Lumi. She is level 120 versus my 100 Rimuru, so she would probably actually do more damage, and I can't remember who I actually nuke with here. Uh, it's one of them, though, because it's an AoE team. But we're sending this. Uh, if your team is doing too much damage, then you can go without gear on Isis and Lumi or whoever, or Shensha, whoever. Uh, but here, we got a very, very good orb change. So we just need to use Isis green buff, and then we can use um, Veldora to reset her orb change, and then we can bring in Lumi. Or we just bring in Lumi now, use her skills, and then reset her too. That's also something that we can do. Uh, don't swap out Isis. Don't do that. I don't remember what I did yesterday. <laughs> Alright, we're going to reset now, so we can get the orb change, and then we can send Isis away. So, boom. Lumi comes in. We have 56 points. We only need 40. So, technically, we could use all three of the skills because of Shinsha's debuff as well. Let's see if I'm smart enough to remember that. Um... Am I smart enough? I'm not smart enough. Okay, well, leaving damage on the table. It is what it is. I did that in both runs, so definitely room for improvement. We're spreading out the damage, though, so we don't accidentally kill, because now we have the magic buff that we have to contend with. So we are going to be stronger on this turn because we have that, even if it's small. But again, we're on turn three now. Oh, maybe we go to turn four instead. Maybe this is a turn four kill because we still have a minute left in this clip. So, one of the ways, like, we could orb change here with Millen, or we could just go ahead and nuke. We've got enough points, right? So we can do that, that, and then we could use, if we reset, we can get another uh, stack on Rimuru, either, uh, I have actually have both of the alt and the AoE buff. So it'll drop down to 25 and 15. So Valdora will come in, or, or we could do weird things like that and then use Veldora to reset. And then I guess we can do the alt buff instead. I'm not sure if that was the best option here to do. Uh, I probably should have just used both of Lumi's skills because it will be more impactful than Shinsha's small debuff because it's only 5% every time. Uh, we went with the 10% alt buff. It caps out at 30. And we're going to send an orb here just to lower his health down, not by a lot. And then AoE for 228, 230. The middle ant has crit resistance, so... Eh. Improvement. 715k, yeah, half of the damage cap, but there is an AoE-focused team you can try out. Let's move on. Alright, so we went with, you know, the try hardy ish teams, and now we're gonna scrape a little bit of the bottom. We're gonna use Toa. Still Dark Melon, and Isis, and Rimuru, but we're now bringing the hero and Earth Benny Maru for his double orb steal and his orange orb buff. It's both damage and gauge increase. So we can use the rewind, we can get a full hand of Rimuru hopefully if we can steal some orbs properly, and then we can get at least his alt. If we have, you know, a Toa and 100 points, it's 140 that we can use, so we have enough to use a couple buffs here and there. Um, the Rimuru buff is more powerful than the hero buff in this instance, so it's better to use that, and it is cheaper. But turn one, we'll bring Isis in for Benimaru. He can exist in the back so that on turn two, we can hopefully bring him in, steal orbs, and then give Rimuru either a five or six hand send. It, you know, it doesn't it doesn't matter really that much because a six hand of green is going to give us Toa, which would generally, you know, convert all of the orbs, quote unquote, generally. But we don't do as much damage here. Right? We, we don't have the extra power. We don't have Veldora giving us that sweet magic buff ability. 
Uh, we don't have Shinsha's debuffs. We don't have Lumi with her buffs as well. So we have 96 points. We're going to rewind. And then we're going to just bring in Benny Mario anyways for Isis. And then we're going to steal into five. And still buff the oranges because they're going to use Toa. Because with the extra protection gauge that we get from uh, the rewind skill, plus the gauge increase from this, plus the gauge increase from the charm that we're running, we're going to get another Toa right here. Exactly one more Toa. And then, you know, we don't have to do anything, right? We don't really need to use any other skills. Maybe, you know, if you want to be cheeky about it, you could use the Rimuru buff now, send him away. But that means that you won't have enough points um, on turn three because you won't have access to another Toa. So here, I'm just going to send the four Rimuru orbs. Uh, we have the most of him. He'll do the most damage. And we'll just try and take down that right ant as much as possible before we nuke. So, not a lot of damage, certainly, but this now opens it up to where we have the ability to use the crit buff and then the alt buff while not having, like, you know, a super sweaty stacking team. Um, did you have to bring the hero? Probably not. We probably would have gotten the same thing over uh, if we, well, maybe actually no, we probably wouldn't have. But let's use Toa, give us the 40 points, and then we'll use the crit buff from Rimuru. And that's about all we have access to, so maybe I send an orb. Do I send an orb here? Or do I just nuke? Uh, okay, I send a few orbs just to lower their HP, and then I nuke. So one, two, that didn't do much. And then 71k, 61 on the middle one. We did happen to Lucky Pierce that, but damage definitely much, much lower. 264k. 41,000, though. I mean, I'm only my top score is 50, so we're... 8.5k down, that's not terrible for not a great team right there with damage output. So, at least the score multiplier is fairly low. But let's move on to the other sad team that I have. Okay, the final team <laughs> is a very weird amalgamation of shit. So we've got Protector Romarus, one that, you know, never really sees the light of day. But I still think she's kind of fun to use once in a while. Um, she gives you 40 points every time you use her. She has this wonderful skill that gives you 45% alt gauge for three turns for free. So you can, you know, you can get an easy alt with that. We've brought back Earth Betty Mario to steal some orbs. Uh, this is assuming that you don't have Isis, but you have Nabe because maybe you played during the Overlord meta. She also has a blue orb change, and that's pretty much all you need. So we brought her instead. And then we brought Dark Shion, Dark Rimuru, and Dark Veldora. So Dark Rimuru is uh, a very, very cheap crit buffing AoE character. So he's going to serve kind of the same purpose as that first anniversary Rimuru we've been using in the last three segments. Dark Veldora gives an alt buff like Dark Milum and also Pierce Resistance down. And then Dark Shion gives Pierce and Pierce Power. And as an added bonus, she also has a poison dodge ability. So you can dodge that pesky damage that's coming in. So let's see how it works out. I don't remember how long this clip is. So I might have to find the starting point. Okay, we found it. So turn one, use Nabe's orb change. It's just a blue orb change. It, if you have any other unit besides Isis and Nabe that can do a blue orb change, then certainly bring them. They're only useful for that one thing. Isis, you know, is doing double duty with her green buff, which is nice. But if you're not running the Veldora team, it's a little bit unnecessary. We're going to leave Benny Maru and Dark Rimuru in the back so we can once again steal orbs into a hopefully six hand send to give him the ult, which, you know, is not really that important because Romerus is giving us that extra ult gauge. It kind of seems redundant, but I mean, if you have her and that's the only protector you can use in this scenario that gives you 40 points that allows you to use two big time buffs, then you got to do it. So Benny Maru does come in for Valdora, who had four orbs, will steal. We'll also buff the oranges just for funsies, even though we're not going to convert all of them to orange, but it'll help us do a bit more damage on his 200%. We'll bring Rimuru in. We will use... Use Romerus. That gives us 40 points. Boom. It doesn't really do anything else for us, so we don't have to use her again. And then we'll use the poison dodge ability, so no one can get poisoned here. And if I actually put gear on them, they would might actually take one damage, and we would get a nice damage taken score. But I don't think I did that. So, sending on the left, so no poison, one damage, no poison, one damage, and no poison, and a pierce. 
because they just had to do that. But we have a Rainbow Ult. Cool. We've got Veldora, we've got Xion, we've got 140 points, and we have enough to use everything, including Rimuru's AoE crit buff, which is not very powerful, but it is still a crit buff. And like 15% crit damage or something? Uh, actually, that skill's not even leveled up all the way. It's a 96% chance to crit. <laughs> yeah, it shows you how much I've used this Dark Rimuru. And let's see. But we did manage a crit on everybody. 45k a hit. Versus in the middle one, which is less, because the resistance, and 194. So, I mean, not that far removed from the last team, right? We're still at 40.4, so only 9.5k under my top score. Still not terrible, but those are the teams that you can try and use for normal battle one. You know, the one remember, 1 1.4 million is the cap, but there are scant few teams that can do that. So if you don't have, you know, the 120 units that are skill-fused and all that, then I would just take your score and, and run. But let me know if there is a different team that you can use that can get you a moderately good score so other people can try and steal that in the comments. But that's it for me, guys. Take it easy, and I'll see you all later.